Welcome to this slide set on quantitative problem solving for soil 4683, soil, water, and weather. I will demonstrate for you how to solve some of the problems that we need to be able to solve in this class. I encourage you to get out a piece of paper, a pencil, and a calculator and follow along with me as I demonstrate these problems. Our first problem here involves calculating the soil water content that would occur after a given rainfall if all of that rain infiltrates into the soil. In this case, you can see that we have a soil profile and the length of that profile is one foot. One foot in uh, thickness is indicated here. Now, the initial water content of that profile is 15%. We can express that as 0 0.15, and I put the units here centimeters cubed per centimeter cubed just to indicate uh, that we're dealing with volumes here as opposed to a gravimetric water content. Theta, remember, stands for water content, and INI stands for initial in this case. So this soil that's at 15% water content receives a precipitation event with one inch of precipitation as shown here. We're going to assume that all of that rain infiltrated and it was stored in the top foot of the soil. So it was all stored in this zone. Nothing was lost from this zone. So the question is asking, what is the average volumetric water content of that layer after the rain? To solve this problem, we just need to account for the initial water content, which here is shown as 15%, 0 0.15, and we're going to add to that the new water that came in by the rain. Now remember, a volume ratio, when we're talking about soil water content, is the same as a length ratio. So this 15%, we could express it as 15 inches of water in 100 inches of soil. If you think of it that way, then it's easy to see that for the new water, we just add one inch of precipitation or new soil water stored in 12 inches of soil. I'm assuming here that you know that 12 inches is equal to one foot. So just by evaluating this simple expression, we can get our new soil water content. In that case, in this case, the soil water content is 23% after the infiltration event, 0 0.23. And here I've given meters cubed per meter cubed just to show that there's a variety of equivalent units we can use to express the soil volumetric water content. In this problem, we have a soil profile with two horizons. You can see up here in the question statement, the A horizon of a certain soil is 30 centimeters deep, as shown here, and it has a bulk density of 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. It's indicated here by the Greek letter rho, subscript B, that's the bulk density. It has a volumetric water content of 20%, shown here, and the B horizon is twice as thick. It's 60 centimeters thick. It also has a higher bulk density, which is common. It has a bulk density of 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter. Again, down shown here. And its volumetric water content is 30%. You can see there and also shown here. So the question we have here is, what's the minimum amount of rain needed to fill the A and B horizons to saturation? That's the, the problem we need to solve. Now, to solve this problem, we're going to need to remember something about porosity. Earlier in class, we discussed the fact that the porosity, F, is equal to 1 minus the bulk density, rho subscript B, divided by the particle density, rho subscript S. Remember that 
bulk density is the mass of dry solids per unit volume of soil, the total soil volume, whereas the particle density, rho subscript s, refer, is the mass of the solid particles per unit volume of solid particles. So the particle density, rho subscript s, is always going to be uh, greater than the bulk density, rho subscript b. Now, in this problem statement, the particle density is not specified. And that's actually pretty common. What we typically will have to do then is to assume some value for the particle density. In this case, and in all other cases for this class, you can assume a particle density of 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. That value can vary a little bit from soil to soil, but it doesn't vary dramatically. For our purposes, 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter will be an adequate value for our calculations. We break this problem down. We want to first determine how much water is required to fill the A horizon to saturation, and then we'll calculate how much is required to fill the B horizon, and then we'll add those two totals together. We're going to use this definition of porosity that we have here drawn below the soil profile. So here we go. We have the porosity of the A horizon is equal to 1 minus 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter divided by 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. You see we've simply substituted in the bulk density value here in the numerator and the particle density here in the denominator. And the result is 0 0.5 Zero 0.9. Likewise, we can calculate the porosity of the B horizon. We have 1.50, the bulk density of the B horizon, divided by 2.65, the assumed particle density. In this case, we get a lower porosity, as we would expect, 0 0.434. Now we can calculate how much water is required to fill these two layers to saturation. The amount of precipitation or new water that's required to fill the A horizon to saturation is simply the difference between the porosity or the saturated water content, those two are equivalent, the porosity minus how much water is already in the soil. So we don't need to add that water, it's already present. So we take the difference of the porosity minus the existing water content. And now to get it to a depth, we multiply that volume ratio. Remember that a volume ratio and a depth ratio are interchangeable in this context. So we're going to treat it as a de depth ratio and multiply it by the thickness of the layer, 30 centimeters. When we do that, then we get 9.27 centimeters of precipitation needed to fill the A horizon to saturation. It's the same process for the B horizon. All that changes is now we have the B horizon porosity and we subtract off the B horizon initial water content, 30%, and we multiply by the B horizon thickness and we get 8.04 centimeters of water needed to fill the B horizon to saturation. So the total amount needed is simply the sum of that needed for A and that needed for B, 9.27 centimeters plus 8.04 centimeters. And I have here equal to 17 centimeters. Now notice here I've reported my answer with two significant figures. In the intermediate calculations, I carried three significant figures so that rounding error did not accumulate in my final answer. But we can see in the problem statement, uh, we we're limited by two significant figures here in the uh, initial water content as well as in the depth. So we have two significant figures in our answer. 